So I went in, had my blood work done this morning. I'll have the results of that later today. But in the meantime, I thought I'd tell you about the overnight experience of wearing the Stello. It's still looking good here because I did shower with it this morning too. Yeah, really unchanged and the results have been pretty consistent, though a little bit disturbing. So the readings overnight stayed very low. In fact, a number of them said it was sort of off the chart low, below 70. It doesn't measure whether it's 69 or 59 or 49. All it tells you, below 70. Now that doesn't really make sense. I know my blood sugar is not that low. And as I mentioned, I really do think I need to add 10, 15 points to get more of a finger poke type of blood glucose reading to have it match up. But reading up about it this morning, I found this is a fairly common phenomena with the continuous glucose monitors, especially in this position on the back of the arm, because when you lie down to go to sleep, it this basically pushes against the bed. And what can happen is, I think they call it a pressure low, where it's not a true low blood glucose reading, though it appears to be, but it's because of the pressure on this that pushes it up into the arm. Two things can happen. It can both um, sort of push fluid away from it so it doesn't get a clear reading. It doesn't have the glucose to find and so it reads low. Also, if depending on how you're sleeping, you can sort of compress it so it doesn't get much circulation. So there's no fresh fluids going by it for it to measure. In any case, a lot of people who've been using continuous glucose monitors, all the brands over the past few years, mention this is kind of a known thing. So I'm not so worried about that. Now this did not cause any discomfort with me sleeping. I actually forgot I had it on and slept my normal way, which is about half the time on one side, half the time on the other side. Though come to think of it, when I'm sleeping on that side, then why would the numbers be low? More questions to be answered with time, and boy am I accumulating lots of them. As soon as I got out of bed, my numbers came back into the range where it can read them, and um, I had just some water to drink because I was having that fasting blood test. Normally I would have tea, and I went for my usual walk, about half an hour, walked about a mile and a third, and when I got back from that, I thought, okay, I'm gonna see the numbers go down from having put in a little exercise, but no, they actually went up, and apparently that's a thing that can happen too. Boy, do I not know much about how the blood glucose and the insulin works. Again, I went online looking for answers, and people who've been wearing continuous glucose monitors for years posted about the fact that if you're in a fasting state and you do some exercise, you can see that happen because I guess it's your liver will, re will release some glucose to provide some energy to the muscles when it senses you're trying to do some kind of exercise, but you've been fasting so long you don't really have that glucose floating around in your blood. And then I got right in the shower when I came back. By this time, my blood glucose is showing up in the 90s, which kind of surprised me because it wasn't that much physical exercise. I thought maybe getting in the shower the water on this or the hot water on this. But I don't really know what to make of it. I have noticed that since I woke up today, my numbers are staying higher than they were most of the day yesterday. And that could just be the device getting used to my system and giving me more accurate numbers so I don't have to add on those extra 10, 15 points to each blood sugar reading. Blood test results show 90. And if you look at the Stello reading right before and after, so five minutes separated results, it makes it 88.5 compared to 90. That's pretty close. So 88.5 is what it thinks my blood glucose was right at the time they did the blood draw. So I wasn't expecting breakfast to do this. Whoa! It's up to almost 140, which as I understand it, if you don't have diabetes or prediabetes, 140 is supposed to be the limit where when you've had a meal, it should not go up over 140. Now, it didn't show mine going up over 140, but then again, it only checks every five minutes, so it's possible it could have got up there. So I didn't like seeing that, and I'm gonna be evaluating what I had. Now, my breakfast is a bowl of steel-cut oats, so that's one quarter cup of dry oats with one cup of water boiled for a half hour and you know prepared. So to that I add cinnamon, I add some Indian gooseberry, it's called amla. I add about a teaspoonful of beetroot powder. I add about 10 grams of protein powder 
and that's uh, sweetened with stevia so there's no extra sugar in there. Then I put in some fresh blueberries and I put in some frozen uh, cherries, blackberries, blueberry mix from Trader Joe's. So it's a pretty good bowl of food and I made a note of when I started eating that right after I finished it I had a medium-sized banana and then a few minutes later I went and got a couple tangerines and ate those as well and within 15 minutes my number was up and up and too high for my comfort came back down a little but then back up again was that because I ate the tangerines about 10 minutes after the other food I'm not sure and it stayed not as high as upper 130s but it stayed over a hundred for quite a while and it only came back down to normal glucose levels after about two hours which I understand is the limit that if you don't have prediabetes your glucose from a meal should go up and come back down be back to normal within two hours so I'm cutting it real close getting my glucose up to very nearly 140 and pushing the full two hours before my body's able to get the glucose back into normal range so really didn't like seeing that and this has been my breakfast for years so it may be that I'm working super hard on improving what I eat the rest of the day but I'm destroying all my hard work by having this breakfast that overtaxes my system that gives me a blood glucose spike that's too high and lasts too long so tomorrow the experiments begin first of all cut out the tangerines cut out the banana just the oatmeal the way I prepare it Maybe it's the cherries and berries, the blueberries, the protein powder. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll go and just try just the oatmeal and see. Maybe a half of that amount of oatmeal. Maybe I can still have half the amount of oatmeal, but add those other things, mix it in. Maybe then I can add the banana back in. So it's going to be some experimentation to getting a breakfast that does a better job of keeping my glucose in line with my goals. Right now it's showing me a blood glucose of 92 and steady. And a couple more things. When I went out for my walk this morning, it bothered me a little. There was a little discomfort. And I couldn't tell if it was like the motion of the shirt rubbing on the sensor or the muscle inside or something. But for the first five, ten minutes, I thought, oh, that's actually, I feel a little discomfort. And of course, once you think about it, then you feel it even more. But when I walked a little further and thought about other things, I didn't feel it the rest of the walk. And in the shower, I didn't go out of my way to not get it wet. I took my usual shower. I did go out of my way not to take my sponge and soap and scrub there, went around it, but I rinsed everything. I didn't do anything special getting out of the shower, but I did make sure not to rub the towel across it, just to pat it dry like they suggested. No issue with getting it wet, at least after one shower. So I'm willing to accept now the results I see here on day three as being pretty close to what my actual glucose levels are. That first day when I was seeing it stay in the 70s all the time and then go up to 95 with a meal, I, I think that was all. It was still calibrating. So I'm pretty much throwing all those results out and only counting from when I took that blood test forward as accurate results. And I've already started getting some answers to how the foods I eat every day do affect my blood glucose. Let me show you my breakfast yesterday versus my breakfast today. Same foods, but divided up a little differently. So what I did this morning is I prepared my the same amount of oatmeal in the same way, and I ate that, and I let the blood glucose spike do its thing, come back down to normal, which again took about two hours. Then I ate a medium banana and the two tangerines. Take a look at what that did. So by splitting my breakfast into two, I was able to keep the spikes down under 130 rather than having them up near 140. But now I've got two two-hour spikes. So now I have a new question, and I don't know where to go to get the answer to this. Is it better to put all the food together at once and bump it higher, but only have one two-hour spike? Or is it better to split it like I did and not have it push as high, but now I've got four hours of the curve going up and down? The Stello app did notify me on my phone about that spike for the um, banana and tangerines. I guess it was going up sort of steeply, and so it sent me a notification about my glucose spike. 
So that's a useful thing to have. The Stello has been definitely worthwhile. I've learned a lot from it already and I have so many more things I'm thinking that I'd like to try and find out about how my body reacts to certain foods. So when this month is up, I'll probably do at least another month to be able to try out all the things I wanna learn about. Of course, by that time, it's almost Thanksgiving and oh, maybe I ought to keep it for Thanksgiving and then comes Christmas. So I may be wearing this through the end of the year. Currently, my glucose is at 108. For lunch, I had some uh, wild rice with refried beans and um, some peas. And that's the, the glucose spike looks quite a bit different than my oatmeal spike which you can see on one side. And then towards the middle, you can see what the banana and tangerines did. This spike is lower, but it looks like it might be longer. Is that because of the extra protein in the beans? So many things to figure out. I better start taking notes. I've been using the notes, the note feature of the Stello, but I'm not gonna have the graph to go with it after the 24 hours. They gotta work on that. But maybe I should get an actual notebook, pen and paper, and make my notes about what I'm eating, how I'm feeling, what the graph looks like at least, or maybe do a little drawing of it. So I'll have that to refer back to because I want to create a whole database of all the foods I currently eat, the foods that I have stopped eating because I thought, oh, those can't be good for my glucose levels, and food and drinks that you got to catch at just the right time of year, like eggnog. I have the vegan eggnog, but it's only in the store from like late November until the end of December. Maybe it'll prove to be a spiky drink, or maybe it'll prove to be something that I can have every holiday season. That would be nice, but in any case, I get to have it one more time just to conduct the experiment. And when I've reorganized my foods in a way that makes me happy and makes my glucose levels happy, I'll report back and I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.